My name is Keegan. You may know me online as WebBay as well. Uh, today, I want to talk about getting started with code management in Webflow, specifically using tools like GitHub and Visual Studio Code for client success. So this talk is for you if you're a freelancer and you're starting to write a lot of JavaScript in your Webflow projects, or maybe you're an agency owner and you're finding that you're bringing on more JavaScript developers and you want to enhance your collaboration or enhance your tooling with JavaScript on top of Webflow. So I've been really busy coming up with this presentation, and I have a lot of clients and deadlines, and I'm releasing these Webflow apps, and I just couldn't meet some of my, my deadlines. So I came up with this excuse generator tool for my clients whose expectations I wasn't able to manage. Um, and what it does is it just randomly generates some text strings that displays on the screen. And I'm going to kind of walk you through how I use this tooling to build that. And as I was building this, I got to thinking about JavaScript and how my introduction in Webflow two years ago really like nudged me in the right direction to start coding a lot more. That's really why I started with Webflow in the first place is because I just really like solving technical problems with code. And with JavaScript, you can do advanced animations, quizzes, calculators. You could build Webflow itself. Um, so I think there's so much opportunity in learning JavaScript. And we saw today HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And it didn't happen until like six months into my Webflow journey that I realized that Webflow is just a UI for HTML and CSS. And that was like a light bulb moment for me. And so if you're not familiar with that, we have HTML on the left in the Navigator pane here and CSS on the right in the Styles pane. And there's JavaScript kind of hidden basically everywhere that you may not know about it. Now, HTML and CSS are great, but a lot of people like to poke fun at it as not being a real programming language. And I'm not really here to solve that debate, um, but I am here to tell you more about how to improve your workflow with JavaScript. So I just think this is cool that I learned how to code with a quote unquote no code tool called Webflow. And so here in Webflow is where you might be used to seeing a lot of JavaScript. Um, when I was getting started, my workflow was to just go on the forums and copy paste code snippets. Some of them are jQuery, some of them are JavaScript, some of them I didn't even know what they were. And you just chuck it all in here and cross your fingers and hope that things go well. And as I've worked with more agencies and more clients coming to me for advanced functionality on top of Webflow, I find that time and time again in this before closing body tag. And so here I'm going to teach you how to clean that up a little bit, or maybe just a way that you might want to explore. So how can we make Webflow a better tool for programming? Well, we can use these tools that have been around for decades already. We have Visual Studio Code, which is a code editor or just a place that replaces that text area that I showed you. We have GitHub, which is a cloud-based service where we can store our code. And we can invite collaborators. And a lot of those tools that we saw for collaboration that are being introduced in Webflow were probably influenced by how GitHub is doing collaboration. And it kind of exists as a wrapper for a tool called Git that if you have a Mac, you probably already have installed on your computer, um, which is version control for our code. So we can start with a version 1, release our MVP, and then as you know, we get user feedback, we can rapidly iterate on new um, features. And then JS Deliver, which is a content delivery network or a way of serving our code closest to our customer. So if I'm using the excuse generator in San Francisco, the code that's being served externally will come from JS Deliver via servers that exist near San Francisco, vice having to travel halfway across the world if somebody in Europe is using the excuse generator, um, or I guess London, because London's Webflow Conf is happening in London, right? And better code management can lead to more money in your pocket because you can provide these advanced functionalities that a lot of Webflow developers can't yet provide with na native features. <clears throat> you can build faster. You don't have to wait to click the Publish button. It's just going to pull it on your published live site. You can use GitHub Copilot to use AI to generate like dummy data, generate code, all sorts of things. You can get enhanced collaboration. I already talked about this quite a bit. But uh, you could, if you're an agency owner, you could hire people really easily and just add them to your GitHub account and bring them in. Or you could get hired if you know the tools. And you can have more confidence in your code. You can start strongly typing your TypeScript with JavaScript. And you can run automated tests and just have all sorts of automations around your code so that as your projects get more complex, um, you can facilitate that. So I wanted to do a demo today, but I didn't have all the time that I wanted. If you are curious about this, I have a full walkthrough on my YouTube. It's this one here, Stop Messy Code, Tidy tidy code workflow with Webflow. Highly clickable YouTube thumbnail. Look at my face there. Uh, but I will just kind of click through some slides that show you the different tools I'm using so that you have an idea of how it works. So this is GitHub Desktop. I'm not using Terminal. We're not going to do any command line here. I'm trying to stay as no code as I can. But when we write the code, of course, we will be code heavy. 
Um, so I'm, I'm giving the name of ex Webflow Excuse Generator to my repository here. The description is it helps manage client expectations. And the local path is in my coding folder in the sick demos subfolder. And this is my code here. I'll just walk it. Actually, this is Visual Studio Code. I'll give you a quick introduction to that. On the left, we can see I have index.js. That's going to be my JavaScript file that I want to run the code from. And on the right is where I have the code that I'm writing. And I'm, so I'm using the query selector method to get an element on the page with an ID of excuse button. That's that big red button that I showed at the beginning. And then at the bottom there, I'm adding an event listener so that when I click it, I run some code. And the code I'm running is that generate excuse uh, function up there. And it's just grabbing some random strings from four different arrays, who, action, what, and when, and then returning that random string each time you click the button. Now, the other thing I want to point out at the bottom right is I have a server started at port 5500. I have an extension in Visual Studio Code called Live Server. This creates a really simple HTTP server on my local machine that lets me run the code locally from my computer on the site uh, from Webflow. So if I actually just go into my browser to 127.0.0.1 and then colon port 5500, it's up here, but in the back you can't see that, slash index.js, you'll just see the exact same code show up in your browser. And what we can do is we can put that inside a script tag, inside the head tag here, because I'm deferring the script, which means it's going to download it first and then execute it after the DOM content fired event. I'm getting into a lot of uh, tricky vocabulary here, so I'm going to go the other direction now and try to simplify a little bit. But all I'm doing here is I'm just grabbing that code externally. I'm setting it to that source attribute in the script tag. And now I can set up my Webflow project. I have this big red button, Manage Expectations, and I've given it an ID of excuse button. And below that is my excuse message. I'm sorry, but, and that has an ID of excuse message. So I publish, and it's awesome. My code generator works, um, or my excuse generator, excuse me. And so it's not on the internet yet, though. It's just on my local machine. If I sent somebody this URL, this staging URL, uh, you know, say I do send it to my buddy Shane or my buddy Curtis, they're not going to see anything. They're just going to see I'm sorry, but, but the functionality is not going to hurt for them, or not going to work for them. So let's ship it. So back in GitHub Desktop, I can create a commit message. I have a title here, first draft completed. And then I actually used my excuse generator to create a commit message. It says I'd uh, create a better commit description, but the app misinterpreted the text input before the conference. And this is actually kind of green. It's just showing us what's called diffing. We saw that in Webflow. Diffing is just looking at your old version of the code and the new version. In this case, everything is new. So it's adding all those new lines of code. And we click Commit to Main. And then we publish it to GitHub as well. And I'm going to uncheck that Keep This Code Private button. So this code is public. Everybody could go see it. But that's important because we want the content delivery network to be able to see it. If we don't uncheck that, then JS Deliver won't be able to retrieve our code. So we publish, and now I'm in GitHub here. And on the right, I have an option to create a new release. So I'm going to click that. And now I create a new release. It's version 1. And I can give a little description here. And I can publish the release. Now the next step, I'm on the JS Deliver home page. This is step 11. I know we're getting into the weeds a little bit here, but we're almost there. Um, if I go over to the GitHub tab, they give us a little template URL. And all we have to do is take that template URL and plug our own information in. So Leary JK, that's my uh, GitHub account name. Webflow Excuse Generator, that's the repository name. V1 is version 1, and index.js is the file. Now I can verify my code is available by plugging that URL into the, into the browser. We'll see the code again so we can be sure, like, OK, we know how things are working. Um, we can like, give ourselves a pat on the back that everything's going well. And then we can just plug it into that script tag. And we'll get the working version that I can now send to Shane and say, hey, if you're having trouble managing your client's expectations, don't worry, dude. I got you. But my excuse generator ran out of excuses. This is where the power of using these tools is going to come in, in that we can rapidly iterate. We could bring on more people to create version 2. So a quick overview of how you would release version 2. I've just come back into Visual Studio Code here, and I've added some extra strings into each of the arrays. Nothing fancy. I just want some more variety. I go back to GitHub Desktop. I create a new commit. And you can see here, at the top, it's kind of it's got some items in red with a minus sign and some new in plus. That's everything that I've added. And so we'll commit this to main. We'll create a new release again, but with a v2 tag instead of v1. And we'll publish that release. We just point our Webflow project to that new version. 
and it's even more perfect. We have more excuses. If I ran out, I can send even more now. And say I had a bug or something that didn't work here, I could roll back to V1 just by changing that V2 back to V1. So you don't have to go in and re-edit all the code or ask your developer to come in. It's, it's like pretty easy to iterate or to roll back. Now, some of you may be in here very experienced developers, and you might want me to mention a couple things that I'm going to mention now. So enhancements to explore with this workflow, there's all sorts of things you can do with this now. Once you're comfortable with this, it really opens a lot of development opportunities to you. So Node Package Manager, along with bundlers, if you're using external libraries like GSAP or Chart.js or Calendar.js, rather than importing via a script tag, you can import them directly into your project. And this will support all your IntelliSense and your autocomplete and things like that so that you can have a, a much better developer experience. And then using bundlers, you can bundle that all into the same, um, the same file so that you only have to serve one file uh, in that script tag. And then you can also, your bundler, depending on which it is, it'll support code minification. So I told you how this is all public. You could you know, minify your code so that if you have an awesome app idea, nobody comes in and steals it. Uh, you probably want to minify your code in that sense, right? And just a lot of things. You can target different JavaScript versions. Uh, so you can support older browsers. If your client you know, is like a huge government entity, then you probably want to support things like Internet Explorer and that sort of thing. We have semantic versioning. I just did v1, v2, very iterative. But if you want to specify this is a major or a minor update or just a patch, you can specify with that. So if you have other developers consuming your code, they will know if they have to what they'll have to change and hopefully not break their own code. And then lastly is GitHub Actions. This was all very manual, but you can automate those releases that you have when you publish new uh, versions and things like that. I will also mention our FinSuite developer starter template. This is designed to be used with Webflow, with this workflow. It's a bit more advanced than what I described, but it includes tools that we use all together, TypeScript. It has ESLint rules and prettier rules so that we're all writing the same style of code but still allows for creativity in writing code and differentiating a bit between developer to developer. We also have a testing suite built in. We have a build, build suite built in. And uh, yeah, just a lot of sweet things, I guess. And TypeScript utilities designed to work with Webflow. Lastly is my YouTube channel, shameless plug. But uh, I have a, a lot of developer stuff in here on how to improve your workflows with Webflow on my YouTube. So, that's all I got. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, looking forward to chatting with everybody later.